Hello and welcome to this short video on Wonders 2020 and the foundational skills, phonics, word work that is found within this resource. My name is Brandon Harvey, National Literacy Specialist with McGraw-Hill Education, and I'll be your guide through this short video that's really focused on the resources, the updates, the things that you'll find that support those foundational skills instructions. I would like to start with this great quote from Dr. Doug Fisher, one of our lead authors with Wonders. He says, every student deserves a great education, not by chance, but by design. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk to you about is the design of the Wonders curriculum, specifically around the elements of thinking through um, phonemic or phonological awareness, connecting that to the phonics, um, high frequency word instruction, but also thinking about handwriting and thinking about spelling and then even moving into vocabulary development, all part of word word study or word work. But before we get into that, do know that there are supports for every teacher. Now, let's think about, of course, a big portion of the kindergarten, first and second grade curriculum is around foundational skills, right? If you look at the standards, especially for K and one, that is the core of those standards. And so you'll find for Wonders 2020, um, all new Start Smart uh, pages that are used within unit one, the beginning of the year to set um, every teacher off to a successful road using the Wonders curriculum. But what I like about it is that it really gives the teacher the why behind the what, those spe especially those, those routines that are so important. So a brand new instructional routine handbook is another great complement to the Start Smart resources, along with a brand new suggested lesson plans and pacing guides. So again, um, depending on if you have a 120 minute literacy block or a 90 minute literacy block, whole group, small group, you see those suggestions are all built out kindergarten all the way through sixth grade. And it goes beyond just resources, but also embedded online resources, such as our classroom videos, um, specifically targeted to foundational skills, you'll see um, really wonders in action. You'll see those whole group and small group phonics lessons or phonological awareness lessons. You'll see routines for those high frequency words, spelling, dictation. Um, all of those tools are built in here with sort of on the spot, on demand videos for a teacher to see and using how to use those, those manipulatives and those resources. Now let's dig a little deeper into that all new instructional routine handbook. I've really pulled out because that's what we're talking about today is that word work section. And you're going to see all of those connected pieces are all part of those foundational skills and how we do that. But what I think is great is for any teacher, you get those sort of author insights. There's a great quote here from Dr. Tim Shanahan about the importance of phonological and phonemic awareness, but also it gives the background for the teacher. What does the research say about, about it and how is that then taught in Wonders and what does success look like? And then following that background information, teachers will see the explicit routines stepped out for them. Uh, this is just one example here, a phoneme blending routine with teacher tips and all important corrective feedback. We can see the same thing for phonics routines. First, starting with what do you need to know about phonics? What is research saying? We've got some author insights from Wonders author, Dr. Jan Hasbrook, as well as the research behind it. How does Wonders teach it? As well as what does success look like? So you can be rest assured that the foundational skills instruction throughout the Wonders curriculum is rooted and grounded in best practices and research. And just like you'll see, continuing after that background information, you'll see specific pages for the teacher with those routines stepped out. Here is a sound spelling card routine along with those teacher tips embedded. Now, also what's going to start off every classroom for success is our screeners and our diagnostic placement assessment resource here. And again, really thinking about foundational skills, you'll see those phonics and decoding screeners uh, or phonics survey from Dr. Jan Hasbrook, um, phonological and phonemic awareness, which is a key part to um, unlocking and uh, decoding phonics. We know that often when students show issues with fluency or comprehension in upper grades can often be traced to a lack of phonemic awareness. Now, when we look at the overarching development of what we're doing, remember that everything in Wonders starts with listening and speaking, 
then moving into reading, writing, but also thinking about how do we build independent thinkers and how do we even build change makers? And so you'll see this applied throughout every aspect of the Wonders curriculum. Now, in, within Wonders, really it's divided out into areas that really fit a workshop classroom uh, from foundational skills, word work, all the way into a read alouds, shared and close reading, that writing piece, small group, and of course our ultimate goal, which is independence, but offering independent choice during the literacy block. But what we're going to focus on today is those foundational skills or word work. So um, although Wonders is a whole curriculum piece that, that is for every aspect of the literacy workshop, whether it's whole group, small group, independence, or choice, let's first talk about a strong phonics instruction. And this is pulled from author and researcher Wiley Blevins, um, the seven characteristics of strong phonics instruction. You'll see readiness skills is so important, um, making sure that students have those alphabetic principles that are needed to be successful. Students need a wide range of these skills, and those are developed through phonemic awareness and oral blending and oral segmentation. Um, for example, in Wonders, alphabet recognition is just those first three weeks, learning the names and the shapes and the sounds and really focused on the letters of the alphabet and being able to say those letters of the alphabet with fluency is a big part of that Wonders kindergarten curriculum. You'll see number two, which is a scope and sequence. Know that Wonders has built a tight scope and sequence. While there is no quote unquote right way, um, there's no specific research on what letter sounds are introduced first or last, you'll know that Wonders has a careful stair step uh, that builds so that students are blending and building words quickly. So we're introducing those high utility letter sounds very quickly. Uh, number three, blending opportunities. This is really a main strategy for teaching on how to sound out words, um, to build those, uh, even those one word syllables moving into multisyllabic words, even in, in second grade on up. Um, number four, dictation, right? And this is really another way to think about dictation is guided spelling. Um, with teacher thinking aloud about this, especially in the early grades of kindergarten. And, and remember, we don't think of this as a spelling test, but an activity that helps students really transfer their, their phonics skills into to, to early writing. Then number five, word awareness. Um, while the instruction to phonics skills is really best when it's explicit and systematic, students need opportunity to play with words, experiment with words, be exposed to lots of words, and we do this through word sorts. Um, you'll find our another Wonders author, which is Dr. Donald Bear, who's very famously known for Words Their Way. And so you'll see that connection of word sorts and patterning, and that's how we connect to our spelling lists. Um, number six, high frequency words. High frequency words are really just the, the most common words in the English language, and some are, in reg are irregular, right? They don't really follow a regular sound spelling, but you will find that, that we have specific instruction and routines built around high frequency words that students need to master. Those top 200 or 300 words are taught in grades kindergarten, first, and second grade. And then finally, number seven, reading connected text. This is, this is another way to think about this is controlled or decodable text, um, something that students should really develop a sense of comfort in and that they can have control over. And it's a really a key learning tool early in phonics instruction to practice and apply the phonics that they're learning and also a way to build those foundations very, very quickly and early in the early grades. So think of this as a checkoff list because this is what you will find within the Wonders Foundational Skills. Now, as we dig dive deeper into actually what you'll see in the curriculum, in the teacher's guide, you'll see this phonics skills trace in kindergarten, first, and second grade that really illustrates the daily, explicit, systematic, and recursive nature of the Wonders phonics or foundational skills. Here, I love this skills trace because what it's showing me is sort of where I've been, right? The parts that's shaded, um, where I'm going to be at, long vowels, for example, but also where I'll be going in further units of study. 
You'll also find a very consistent routine, and this again is rooted in research and best practices. You will find daily review, right? Because Wonders is a recursive or spiraling curriculum. We are constantly going back and having opportunities for students to spiral back and apply previously learned sound spellings. You will find many lessons. These many lessons can be delivered whole group, often very important at the beginning of the week, but also small group instruction is provided as well. And a lot of times, especially at second grade, you may start whole group, but you may not stay there for all five days of a week. You might transition into more targeted instruction uh, at the small group table. And then, of course, opportunities for informal progress monitoring to inform my, my reteaching or teaching opportunities. So you'll see these progress checks are also embedded within Wonders 2020. Another new spread built in for Wonders 2020, really for kindergarten and first grade and second grade, is that focus on word work and how do we build foundational skills. You'll look at the far left. That first column is showing you all of the hands-on tools that are available to the teacher to use in whole group and small group instruction. You'll see sort of the flow of instruction, which starts with phonological and phonemic awareness as we categorize, identify, or segment sounds, depending on the day's instruction. And then that moves into a phonics lesson, where we first introduce and review, moving into blending routines, connecting it to practicing handwriting, structural analysis, so that we're really building, reading, building up our reading word bank. And we always connect phonics to spelling. So that's what um, really leads what kind of words students will see. It's going to follow the same phonics pattern. And then, of course, high frequency words. But you'll notice the arrow down there in that column. It's all about application. And that's what often is missing in phonics programs that are teaching phonics in isolation is that they're not connecting to the ability for reading and writing opportunities, and Wonders does. So we want students to have immediate application of those skills. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll once again see that phonics skills trace is identified for this particular unit and week, but also that explicitness, how we go from a review to the mini lesson, check for success is gonna help the teacher identify, do, do I need to move to targeted differentiated instruction for more intensive maybe tier twos or gifted and talented enrichment? Or maybe that check for success is moving students to having lots of opportunity and more exposure with independent practice, both hands-on as well as online uh, independent practice opportunities. So let's dig now and look at some things that are new and exciting for the Wonders Foundational Skills. New for kindergarten that you'll see in Wonders 2020 are things like Build Your Word Bank. This is an opportunity for the teacher to go beyond the um, high-frequency words that, of course, are going to be taught to everyone. And if the teacher wishes to use these little mini lessons to teach even more additional high frequency words, we provide that opportunity. We provide additional word cards for the teacher and the students, as well as that read, spell, write routine and opportunities to practice. Also new for kindergarten, you'll find starting as early as unit two, long vowel awareness. So of course, we're teaching specific um, scope and sequence of letter sound instruction, but we also know that often students come to us um, and they're ready for more and you want to go further. And so we provide this long vowel awareness. Again, just, just if students making them aware of these long vowels and then opportunities later on in further units to apply that to phonics lessons. Again, these can be optional, but they're there uh, for the teacher to have a more robust foundational skill scope and sequence. And to support that long vowel awareness, you will find a specific additional new decodable reader called the Long Vowel Express. Now I want you to get a sense of the actionable, um, sort of very intentional lessons. And what I'm going to show for you uh, very quickly is a first grade foundational skill lesson. It's about mid-year of first grade on uh, long I. This is actually the second time students have been exposed to long I, so we're coming back to it again, but introducing some new sound spellings. And remember, what does research say? What is, this, what is one of the characteristics of strong foundational skills would be a review. And so we start using our word building cards by reviewing specific sound spelling. So I might have my students 
repeat these sounds like shh, 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 or th, 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 three times each because students are going to see these particular sound spellings that have already been introduced but are going to be needed within this week of instruction to be successful in decoding the text. From there, after that quick review, we move right into phonemic awareness lesson. This one happens to be a phoneme categorization. So I might say very quickly, listen to these three words. Tell me which word does not belong. Side, night, fit, right? We might say that fit does not belong because it has a short I, whereas night and side have a long I. And after some practice with different groups of words, we quickly move into our phonics lesson. So we've done something with the ear only, no print, just the sound, right? R rooting our instruction in listening and speaking, then moving into a phonics lesson. Here we're going to be introducing long I and the various spellings we're going to be using with our sound spelling card. So we're going to learn not just the letter I as in five, but also could be spelled with a Y, I-G-H, or I-E. From there, I want to have an opportunity for that informal check for success. I can use an online rubric or I can simply identify through observation and asking questions. Can children read and decode words with long I? If no, go here. If yes, go here. So that's helping me um, organize my small group instruction and you'll find these check for successes throughout. Let's look at our blending routine. Again, another characteristic of a strong phonics curriculum will be blending. And so here I'm going to be using my pocket chart with my word building cards. And I would be having students sound again, sound by sound uh, blending with these cards. So the letter S, right, is S. We have learned that the letters together, the combination of I-G-H together makes the sound I. And then T, so S, I, T, we blend sight. What's the word? Sight. And so this is, again, part of those routines that are, again, explicitly introduced and taught through our instruction routine handbook and are throughout the instruction. Then we move into blending lines. You'll notice here the first few lines are that skill. So again, lots of opportunity to have that practice with that long I sound, either spelled I-G-H, I, Y, or IE. That last line has some review words such as toast or teach or green, and then connected text opportunities. Again, a characteristic of a strong phonics program. So why did the child cry? Or the plane can fly high in the sky. Again, notice within the words in isolation or the words in connected text, it ties back to those initial sounds that I reviewed, such as sk, 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 or wah, wah, wah. Those were needed in order to decode and apply. And again, the whole heart of what I'm doing, right, is not to just read decodable text or words in isolation, but is to get students towards reading that high quality, authentic text. And so that application, one of the ways we're going to have that application opportunity and at the center of our text set in first grade is that well-beloved story, High Fly Guy by Tom Arnold. But before we even read that um, authentic text, students will have opportunities through a shared reading experience in 2020 to annotate or mark up their shared read, which is called Creep Low, Fly Hi, again, you'll see opportunities with a um, really engaging, uh, decodable, shared text, right? It's, it's um, not a silly text. It's got characters. Um, there are, there has a beginning, a middle, and end, and it's engaging. And you'll see decodable or, or controlled texts like this that are both fiction and nonfiction. But what's exciting is that students are really reading with a pencil on that shared read. So they're reading words aloud and they are identifying words with a long I, for example, here spelled with a Y. So immediate application, not only of that phonics, but also of their high frequency words. And with what Wonders is doing is again, I said not teaching phonics in a bubble, but connecting it, right? And so everything we do within Wonders is 
built around essential questions. Everything I talk about, read about, write about, and think about is tied to this particular essential question here at first grade. What do I know about insects and how are they alike and different? And so we use this text set to also build knowledge. So through a workshop um, environment, for starting with that read aloud to build oral language and to practice retelling skills. Moving into my shared read, Creep Low, Fly High, which we just saw is immediate application of phonics and high frequency words. Moving into our authentic anchor text for application, paired selection to build additional content knowledge and leveled readers at the small group table, all centered around that same essential question, that same skill of long I, but also all of these texts are also teaching that comprehension skill of point of view, and all of these texts are building that science knowledge. So it's that idea of not just learning to read, but at the same time, reading to learn. I think that's really powerful. You'll find throughout, as I mentioned earlier, that what drives our phonics and uh, our spelling words is our phonics element. So you're going to see differentiated spelling lists now for approaching on or beyond level. Notice that they're, again, those long I words that are going to get us to the center of our text set, which is high fly guy. Here's an example of some other differentiated uh, spelling lists from upper grades as well even, working with, this one happens to be working with the prefixes of un or re or m. You'll find care of our wonders author, Dr. Donald Bear, uh, those word sorts, so open sorts, pattern sorts, speed sorts, blind sorts, can be done pencil paper, can be done collaboratively uh, in a writer's notebook, but also digitally online. We continue with application and practice opportunities through our workstations that are ready-made. So we're focused on long I, and so here I've got three different activities. I've got my word building cards that students could be doing collaboratively, um, reading and making lists with their high frequency words, or for those more gifted or enrichment opportunities, changing the Y to I and building words um, that have ES or ED endings. So all of these could be differentiated stations for practice and application. As I mentioned earlier, even the leveled text are connected to what I'm doing whole group. So both with skills and with strategy. So you see this um, leveled text here, same essential question, same genre, right? And that long I list. And it's an application of also that great oral vocabulary that students are learning here at first grade. And again, you'll see this kindergarten, first and second grade now has brand new additional decodable readers for practice and application, right? This is that controlled, connected text that students need opportunities uh, to really apply their phonics skills. Not saying that every student will need this, but it's here. And what I like about this is notice you'll see decodables that are both fiction, such as J takes flight, or nonfiction, informational text like be kind to bugs. But what do you notice is that they all have opportunities to apply that long I and also centered around building knowledge around what we know about insects. So again, very connected even into the decodables. And of course, at every grade level, kindergarten through sixth grade, you're going to see a multi-sensory classroom with various classroom tools. We've talked about our high-frequency word and letter building cards and those, those sound spelling cards, but also you'll find sound spelling songs and dances online, visual vocabulary cards for high-frequency words as well as academic vocabulary, those sound spelling work boards, which are great during those blending routines so that you have those Elkhorn and sound boxes for sound by sound identification, but also um, building of words and blending of words. So all of these tools can be used whole group and or at the small group table for hands-on experience. That hands-on experience continues, as I mentioned, digitally with digital practice and application. So this is just an example of that first grade uh, lesson on Long I. Look at all the various activities that they have. And this is just um, one page. There's about 14 different games just for this one week of instruction for students online. And many of those activities and games are data 
collecting. So you see a couple examples from first grade on the left, but even from our upper grades with word sorts and uh, vocabulary um, opportunities and digraphs and building vocabulary. What I also like is that it doesn't stop with whole group instruction, whether that's delivered from the teacher or practice application that's delivered pencil paper or online. We continue to reinforce with small group opportunities and building in tier two right here. So you can see phonemic awareness, structural analysis, even the phonics all tied and connected to learning that long I sound. And then if we need more tier to that more strategic intervention, you'll see specific phonemic awareness, phonics word study, tier two intervention guides for every teacher. And I've just pulled out a couple of lessons that you can see that again, directly relate to that whole group lesson that we begin teaching of long I. But if you need more intensive intervention, you'll find our WonderWorks uh, intensive intervention kits at kindergarten and first grade with, again, additional decodables, teaching charts, lessons, practice and assessment opportunities, or grab-and-go foundational skills cards for grades two through six. But let me just show you an example of that first grade tier three lesson, right? It's all about long I. So here is an additional decodable that focuses in on long I. You see words like fry and might right, and why, a teaching chart that, again, gives more intensive instruction around long I, but also in with connected text, applying those um, foundational words and high-frequency words that are needed to unlock meaning of text are also embedded here through that teaching chart. And then you can just see here at a glance the very explicit nature of this tier three intensive lesson that again centers around three main areas word work shared reading and oral language but if you look even closer unfolding through that gradual release model i do we do you do immediately with corrective feedback and then that informal quick check and you'll see that is a very consistent pathway if students need even more intensive instruction but this is following, I think what's powerful is this tier three, WonderWorks is following the same scope and sequence as the Wonders Core scope and sequence. At all grade levels, but specifically, we've already talked about the informal opportunities with daily quick checks, but do know there is progress monitoring with fresh reads, fluency checks, um, those opportunities which are formative assessments to inform where we go. And so, of course, at kindergarten, first and second grade, that's going to include phonological and um, phonics assessment opportunities. As I mentioned earlier, you have also sort of anecdotal online interactive rubrics. And at kindergarten and first grade, um, this is going to include high frequency words and phonics opportunities along with reading uh, comprehension that I'll be sort of observing through students. And of course, these rubrics, as I fill them out, are flowing into our data dashboard. And that helps inform my next steps of teaching. And so I can even make observational notes here. So when we take this and we jump over to data dashboard, it's informing not only the assessments I take, the games that students take, but also the rubrics, even the practice pages. If those are assigned digitally, they will auto grade and will flow into our data dashboard. That data dashboard provides actionable reporting. So it's going to group my students. It's going to provide um, assignable resources. I don't have to go hunt and gather and go find something on teacher pay teacher or just Google. It's already pulling things that I can auto assign to the student as well as teacher resources, links for me to go back into the Wonders curriculum to do a sort of a double dose, whether that's for a tier two intervention student or even a beyond level enrichment student. And so as we come to an end, what we've seen, and I mentioned this earlier, is that carefully sequenced stair step of instruction. You've seen how we went from a phonical, phonal, phonological awareness lesson of identifying sounds, right? Which sound does not belong? We did that phoneme categorization lesson. Moving into introducing of letter sound connection for phonics, right? With blending opportunities. Then high frequency word instruction. Moving into sentences and of course text and writing opportunities. All of that occurs 
within even as early as kindergarten and first grade those writing opportunities for students to apply their handwriting skills to to write um, those words that they're learning and building and blending and apply those high frequency words so we've taken just a quick look at one aspect of the wonders workshop classroom which is those foundational skills and word work lessons remember you can check this off um, hopefully you've seen that based in research based on best practices wonders checks every box of what is intended to be a strong phonics instruction with everything from readiness to a scope and sequence blending opportunities dictation um, word awareness high frequency words and reading of connected text but it doesn't stop there right i think the strength also um, is that students then have that immediate application to reading and writing thank you so much for joining me on this quick overview of wonders 2020 and its foundational skill instruction where every student is a success story.